welcome with Morning Will. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, man, if you guys don't know who Will is, Will actually has been part of the team for how long now? Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years? That's yeah. insane. And you, what do you do here at the lift? Yeah, so when I first came here, I started serving on the drums, but now I've been doing uh, some photography and videography here um, for the last six years. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So yeah, it's been a, been a lot of fun. It's been awesome, right? And you've been serving this, and pretty much since you got yeah. to the lift, you've been serving, right? I think the first week, I was here, I served. That's, <laughs> that's awesome, um, that's yeah. awesome. Well, hey, thank you. In the chat rooms, let's connect and let's just cheer on Will for being here this morning with us. And I wanna say thank you for being here at The Lift and joining us online, man. It is always a privilege, the fact that we get to be part of your weekend. My name is Juan, I'm the online director. And hey, we wanna talk about serving. Cause see, save yeah. people, serve people. Yeah. It's a culture that we have here at The Lift. And so there's a couple opportunities coming up. What's one of them that's happening today? Yeah, we're doing newcomers lunch. Yeah. Um, basically what that is, is if you're newer to the lift or maybe you've been here even for months and you just haven't been connected yet, um, it's a time to have free food, first of all. Yeah. Uh, also to ask questions to learn what we're about, our mission statement, mm -hmm. um, different ways you can serve here at yeah. the church. And so it's just a good way to connect. Uh, and meet Lance and the rest of our team members here. That's true. We do have one today, but hey, we have them every other month yep. or maybe every three months we have uh, newcomers lunch. So stay connected with us by following us on social media at The Lift Live and always go to Facebook because we have a lot of information there as yep. well. But we have something really exciting coming up on December 18th. What yeah. is it, Will? Giving hope. Giving hope, man. It's, it's so good. It's probably the biggest opportunity we have as yes. a church to serve our community, yes, right? Yes, um, Last year I was a part of it and it was it's just amazing just to see how many families and kids were here. Mm -hmm. So basically what we do is we have the families and kids come in. We do activities with the kids, sing songs, um, and then they have a chance to come and purchase gifts for their kids yeah. while the kids are doing activities. Mm -hmm. The parents do that. Yeah. Um, and so what we need from you and for our church members is resources, first of all, mm -hmm. um, giving. We, I think we did over twelve thousand dollars this past week. Over twelve thousand dollars, yeah. Um, and so this is a good chance to do that. Also to volunteer, we need yeah. um, volunteers. I think we had two hundred kids last year. We're looking at three hundred this year. Yeah. So we need more volunteers. We do, we do. And hey, if you want to sign up for that, you can go to liftlive.com. Go to the bottom. We'll see it right there. Sign up, and then you can choose what team you want to serve on yep. for that day. Well, hey, we have a service to get there, guys. We love you, and we're so grateful to be part of your weekend. See you, guys. Welcome to Church Lift family. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're watching online or if you're here in the room, we're so glad that you're with us. We have Abram Gilder leading us in worship today. We're stoked to have him. And as we go into our first song, I really wanna encourage you to reflect on what the Lord has done in your life and take this time to praise him and thank him for that. So wherever you are, will you join us for worship? How you've brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of
something to praise for this morning. What do you have to praise for? He's been so, so good to me, and I know he's been good to you. Whether you know it or not, he's been good to you. Whether you know it or not, ask him to open your eyes this morning to where he's been good to you. Because you stepped into, you stepped into my
some good stuff right there. Who's glad to be at church today? Hey, I'm going to let you be seated for just a moment and I want to say welcome to those of you that are joining us online. Thank you for being a part of our our service. In fact, will you help me? Help me just welcome all of those that are joining us today, please, with a round of applause. Thank you for being part of, of church. We're so glad that you're here, and we hope that you enjoy the service today. We really do. Um, Let me tell you about some things that are coming up. Really, one, one very important thing that I want to tell you about, and I don't want you to miss it. On December the 18th, we're having what we call Giving Hope. Giving Hope. How many of you were a part of Giving Hope last year? Would you just raise your hand? Okay, so many of you. And um, I want to encourage the rest of you to be a part of Giving Hope 
this year. If you don't know what Giving Hope is, real quick, this is what it is. We're going to bring 300 children, 300 children from our community into the lift on the December the 18th, and we're going to give them their families. We're going to give them Christmas. All right, we're going to allow their parents to go through, and we'll have this whole place that you're sitting in right now will be packed with gifts, toys for the kids, and, and moms and dads will be able to go through here, and they'll be able to pick out gifts for their children, take them down our hallway here to other rooms, and then many of our volunteers will take those gifts, wrap them, and then we'll have a team of people that will take them to their car, and they'll actually show up empty-handed on that day, but they'll leave with a full carload of gifts for their family for Christmas because of you. Let, let me tell you, this, this past week was Giving Tuesday, and we, our goal was to raise uh, $10,000 this past week. Let me tell you what we raised. We raised $12,590. So we're well on the way there. It takes about $100 per kid. So you can do the math. There's a lot more left to go, but you know what? You're faithful. God's going to do this. And so I just want to invite you to be a part of it. Be a part of the, this whole Giving Hope thing. Uh, go to thelivelive.com. Thelivelive.com. Go work your way down at the bottom. You'll see, you'll see Giving Hope. You can click the link there. It'll take you to a page completely dedicated to this event. And I want to invite you to sign up to volunteer. And I want to invite you to be a part and, and, and give in some way. Just to sponsor a child, okay? Uh, you can do that. And it's, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be awesome. So uh, I hope you'll be a part of that. Now, real quick, let me tell you, tell you uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for being part of church. Those of you that are joining us online, this might be your first time. Like you're, you've never watched this before, but now you're, you're joining us. And, and I want to say welcome. Thank you for being a part of our service. Those of you that are here today, this might be your first time here. Please take a moment during the service and fill out our digital connection card. It's very easy. Just go to, the, to our website, theliftlive.com. And you'll just go down to the bottom and you'll see it says digital connection card. You click that link, you can do it right there on your phone and you can fill out a digital connection card, submit that. And it's like your way of sharing with us that you're here and it's our way of connecting up with you. We'll be able to reach out to you via text or email or phone call or something like that. But uh, we, wanna, we wanna get with you, okay? You good with all that? All right, so I, I have to celebrate real quick before I let you worship some more. Um, there is a gentleman here that in your, you'll track back just a few months ago, we were praying for him as a church because we didn't know if he would make it or not. Uh, his name is Ed Helms, and um, we didn't know. We just did not know. Uh, we trusted God with his life, and I, I know this is, this is such a wonderful story to share. And I just want to say, Ed, welcome to church today. He's right back there in the back to my left. You're right. Praise God. Yeah. And we love you. And, uh, Several Saturdays in a row, people gathered at the hospital to pray for him, and we prayed so often here, and God healed him and has brought him to church today. So uh, let's do this. Everybody stand, and we're just going to worship. We're going to worship. It's Christmas time. We get to celebrate Jesus, and so let's do that together as a church. Let's worship. I, I want to say, please help me welcome uh, all the way from Liberty University, uh, Abram is here with us. And he is, does such a great job. And uh, I think you're going to be blessed by him being here today. I really do. So let's pray. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We say thank you for your love for us. Father, thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for the testimony that we get to see today in the fact that uh, our dear brother and our friend is here to celebrate and to worship with us.
thank you for your goodness and your grace. I realize that there are people that walked in today and there are different things that they carried in on their shoulders. There's some of them that is very heavy burdens that are too great to bear. Some may approach this time of the year and it's just too difficult. God, I pray that you would lift those burdens today. As we turn our praise to Jesus, receive the words that come out of our mouths as praise and worship in your ears. Heal hearts, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
about the season is about remembering. The Advent season brings about memories of past with families, gathering around a Christmas tree, opening presents. But a lot of times we forget to remember what's truly important. What's truly important is the fact that Jesus, the Lord of the entire universe, was born. And this is the time that we celebrate that. We come together and we remember the things that he has done for us. Especially in this season when we're in the idea of remembering. We can't get so caught up in the remembering that we forget to act. Remembrance drives you to action. The idea of remembering should bring you to your knees about how good he's been to you. We read scripture to remember what he's done, to remember that his promise is true. It's not to bask in the past, but it's to sit in glory in the fact that he's done it before, he's not gonna stop. So Lord, we thank you of what you've done for us, whether it be 20 years ago, five years ago, five minutes ago, Father, and we are so sorry where we miss you. Or we can't, we're too blind or we're too prideful to see that you're the one who's actually moving, that you're the one who's actually doing all the work. So Father, in this season of remembering, give us new eyes to see your goodness. Give us new eyes to see your grace. Father, forgive us for where we fail you. Lord, we are so, so thankful for you. In Jesus' name. There will be a day when 
death won't be no more Standing face to face With you died and rose again Holy, holy is the Lord Holy is the Lord And every prayer we pray shout holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty the scripture says every knee is gonna bow and every tongue is gonna confess well for me I'm not waiting till that day I'm not waiting till that day who's gonna join me in singing that today today is a day I'm gonna shout holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come This next part, I want you to sing it like the Lord is standing right in front of you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, standing right in front of you. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Can you see him? Can you picture him? Holy, holy. Looking on you and he's so thankful and he's so happy for you he says you are my child he says you are not forsaken he says I've been with you the whole way he says I will never leave you through all your struggles 
the whole time when you feel like you are alone, I am right next to you. I am with you the entire way. And all he's saying is worship. Come back to me. for who you are. Father, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac is the same God that lives today and will live forevermore. Help us not to forget that our remembering of what you've done should drive us to worship. Remembering your goodness, remembering your faithfulness, And Father, if we can't see it, open our eyes to see your goodness. Open our eyes to see your faithfulness. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen, amen, Amen. that's good. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, give him some praise. Yeah. All right, you can be seated. Well, Merry Christmas. Doesn't that sound good, just to be able to say Merry Christmas? It's almost that time. I, I, I love it. I, it's, my, uh, it's my favorite time of the year. I love it. And the reason why, I, well, so many reasons why I love Christmas. One of the reasons why I love Christmas is because that means that my birthday is almost here. In fact, this is my birthday week. All right, if, I figure if my girls can celebrate a week-long, some of them a month-long birthday, I'm going to claim a week. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to claim a week. Uh, my birthday celebration started this past Friday with dinner at one of my favorite places, the bridge. Somebody should have said amen on that one. That is a great place to go to eat. I, I love it. Um, let me just tell you a little bit of the story. Uh, we're there. We sat down for dinner, and I just had received word that they had one more piece of fried chicken left from lunch that day. And if you've never had the fried chicken, it's amazing. Like, you can eat that fried chicken and get saved. I mean, it, it's just amazing. And so because it was my approaching my birthday week, my friend says, well, you should have the 
fried chicken. And so I looked at the, the waitress, and she, she said, well, do you want me to tell them it's yours? I said, please do, please. I want to claim that. And so I claimed my piece of fried chicken. It was absolutely amazing. If you've never had the fried chicken, it's a special. They don't have it every day. You should check with them and see, but it is amazing. I had fried chicken. And let me just tell you how great my wife is. Uh, during, uh, during dinner, she said, well, honey, it, it's, you know, since it's, it is your birthday week, don't you think you should celebrate with a, a chocolate milkshake? I, absolutely, I do think it's time to start with a chocolate milkshake. So let me bring me one of those too. And so the festivities have started. We're celebrating, and I, that's one of the things I, I love about this time of the year. I get to celebrate a birthday. I love it when I when I think about uh, birthdays. It's a celebration, and when I think about Christmas, it's a celebration. And yet when I say that, and I look around, and I, I think about so many different things that are going on in people's lives right now, I'm thinking that there may be some of you, you're not celebrating. Like, you're not feeling Christmassy. It just, it doesn't feel like Christmas at all. And, and so we're going to start a series today to help us rein in and get some understanding of Christmas and just see what it is that God's going to do. So to get us started, I, I want to I read a very, a very famous part of Scripture about the, that has everything to do with the Christmas story. It's the, uh, the announcement of, of Christ, of His coming. You, you can remember this in Luke chapter 2 where the, the angels, the host of angels appears to the, the shepherds who were tending to their flocks. And, and listen to what they said in verse 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. I'm, I'm going to read that one more time. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Everybody say peace. Peace among those whom he is pleased. Now let me ask you. Is that even possible? Is peace possible? I want to take just a moment and, and just look at that one word that was translated as peace. Is, is that even possible to have peace in, in this day and age, in 2021? Is it even possible? That's the, that word that's translated as peace is the Greek word arene. Irene. And if you go and you look at the, the word and what that meant when, when Luke was writing this, this is what he's seeing. Th this word meant a state of, of tranquility, exempt from rage, harmony. I read that this week and I'm thinking, is that Christmas right now? Like, is there, is there tranquility right now? I don't, I don't feel it. Is, is our day and our time and, and where we're at in 2021, is it exempt from rage? Has anybody been to the mall lately? Is there harmony? I mean, does that even exist these days? I'm thinking, I think it's just the opposite. It, it, there's, there's really not a lot of peace. Like you might be thinking right now there's, there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of anxiety and, and there's this, this, this pandemic thing that's floating around. Like is it ever going to go away? And, and now we have this, this, this micron thing coming around. I mean it sounds like a Decepticon, right? I mean are the Transformers taking over? I mean it, it's just crazy. There's tension everywhere, at work, in our families. There's, there's misunderstandings. There's disagreements. I don't, I don't think about peace. The title of today's sermon is simply this, Don't Give Up on Christmas. Don't give up on Christmas. When you look, think about Christmas, um, 
there was a lot to give up on then. In fact, life was hitting them. If you track back all the way some 2,000 years ago, you track back, you'll see that life was hitting them pretty hard. Um, in fact, God had been quiet. He had, he had been silent for 400 years. Think, think about that one now. They were used to God speaking. They would listen to God, for God, he would speak. But for 400 years now, he has been silent. He's not saying a single word. He's not speaking through the prophets. He's not talking to anybody. You ever felt like that? This is how Christmas started. God is silent. Today what I, I'm going to do is um, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story that you might not at first think that it has anything to do with Christmas. It's a story that's found in Luke chapter 1. And if you have a Bible, you can turn there. If, if not, just follow on the screens. But um, let me tell you a little bit about this story. You're going to see two characters. You're going to see Zachariah and you're going to see Elizabeth. This is a husband and wife. They have been married for a long time, a very long time. Zechariah is a Jewish priest. He is one of thousands. In this day and age, in this culture, there would have been thousands upon thousands of, of Jewish priests. He's one of them. I find it interesting that Luke decides he's going to talk about him. Luke's going to write about this one out of thousands. He's going to write about this, this, one, this one priest. Look what he says in verse 5. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the, the commandments and the statutes of the Lord. I love that. Whenever the Bible points out that you are righteous and that you are blameless, you are righteous and you are blameless. I mean, that's Luke. It's interesting. He's going to point that out. This couple... Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were, they were righteous. They were in right standing with God. They were blameless. That, that word blamelessly, that word blamelessly means above reproach because of the, their morality. Okay, they, they, they were pure. It's interesting because we will learn in this story that blameless doesn't necessarily mean blessed. Because you continue reading in verse 7, it says, But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, there's a lot happening right here. Because it, it, what we learn at this moment is that in their marriage, they're old, they're advanced in years. Most scholars believe that they're somewhere in their, in their mid to late 60s or in their 70s. And they cannot have children. In the Jewish culture, children were everything. Family was everything in the Jewish culture. They valued them. And so a person that could not have children, they were considered to be cursed by God. And so people would, would see them and people who knew them would know that, that something's wrong. Like, what have you got hidden away that nobody but God knows because you've been cursed by him. He's not blessing you. Kids were a hope of the future. The older you got, you, you wanted more children who, would, who could take care of you, but, but they didn't have any because they couldn't have any. And in this day and time, they would have been laughed at. There would have been a, a great deal of shame, disappointment in their life because they could not have children they were barren 
Look what verse 8 says. Now while he was serving as priest, talking about uh, Zechariah now, as he was serving as priest before God when his division was, was on duty, according to the customs of the priesthood, he was chosen by Lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Now, let me give you some, just some information about this, what's going on in Zechariah's life. This would have been the most important day of Zechariah's life. Like priests would, would go years without having temple duty because of the thousands of, of priests that were there. They would go years. It, it's quite possible that this is the first time Zechariah has ever had this particular duty in, inside the temple. And so he's going to offer this incense. And so this is very important to him. He's going to go in and he's going to light this incense. And, and when the people see the smoke going up from the incense, they would, it, it, it represented their, their prayers. Their prayers were going up to God. So very important role that he is about to play so he he goes in imagine with me he goes in might maybe his first time ever he goes in there and verse 11 says and there appears to him an angel of the lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense it's been 400 years since any any message from god any prophecy from god any 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 sighting of any of god's moving and and now This angel shows up, verse 12, and Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. It would have have given us a heart attack, right? That's that's what it's saying there. I mean, it it just startled him. And verse 13 says, uh, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard And your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. Think with me now. Here he is. He's he's at work. He's going to... You know, the first time maybe that he's ever been in at this particular place in the temple. He wants to do a good job. This angel shows up from nowhere who he knows the scriptures. He knows. He, he, he would know Malachi. He would know that since, since that was written, there's been no word from God. And now an angel, and, and, and to top it all off, it's Gabriel. He's there. 400 years of silence. Decades of, of suffering and shame and disappointment. And just imagine how he's feeling. Imagine the fact that his wife has been barren all these years. They're growing old together. They don't have many more years left. And this is what God is giving them. This is the gift that God is giving them to life. Think about gifts with me for just a moment. We, we put a lot of emphasis into gifts, don't we? Especially at Christmas time. I think back to when I was growing up. You know, I, mom and dad would ask, what, what, are, what are you guys, what do you, you, know, what do you want for Christmas? And, and we would have a, you know, a little bit of a list that we would share with them. But today, things have changed. I mean, do you know that now my kids give me a spreadsheet? I mean, do yours do that? I mean, literally, a list of an Excel spreadsheet in categories of what they want for Christmas. And they'll include links. You know, just just click the link and, and you can go and order it and, and, and have it shipped in, you know? I mean, that, that's, that's where we're at. And, 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 you know, it's pretty cool that we can do that. And, and you think about it. We're all about gifts. We're, we're all about giving the perfect gift. We, 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 some of us husbands, we, you know, we really 
struggle with what are we going to get our spouses this year and in and, and the same way with 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 the wives they would struggle on what are they going to, what are we going to get them and i mean we, we 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 want the perfect gift it's it's a lot of it's just a lot of talk about gifts i remember uh, one particular christmas growing up really the only thing i wanted was a motorcycle that's it. I just wanted a motorcycle. And I kept asking mom and dad, I want a motorcycle. They kept telling me, you're not getting a motorcycle. But I said, no, I want a motorcycle. And I'm just, I'm just counting on it. I'm going to get a motorcycle. And we get to Christmas. I have a younger sister. And so on Christmas Day, this is the way it was in our home. When, whenever we, wo- we would wake up, and we would wake up really, really early, uh, we would wake up and, and we had to get mom and dad up and then mom and dad had to go into the living room where they would set up their, all the cameras. You know, this was back when you didn't carry your camera in your back pocket. You had the big shoulder mounts, you know, VHS and VHSC, you know, and, and then mom would say, okay, okay, come on in, you know. And, and I can remember this one Christmas I entered into the den and, and I, I looked around and I didn't see a motorcycle, and I saw some other things there that was, they were for me, but I'm thinking, I, don't, I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. Where's my motorcycle? And, of course, my sister, she's over there, and, and she's just loving everything that she got because she got what she wanted, but I didn't get what I wanted. And, and, I mean, I think about that with gifts. Like, we just, we love gifts, we love them. We, 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 we'll take them. I don't know if you do this, but you, you'll shake them a little bit and try to figure out what is it that's in there. Mom was always so good. Before Christmas, she would let us open at least one present before Christmas. And I love opening presents. You probably love opening presents too, right? I just love to see what it is that I'm going to get for Christmas and Hold on a minute. That, that's not what I asked for. Well, surely there's, there's got to be something better in here, right? I mean, hold on. That's not the gift that I wanted this Christmas. You, you, ever, you ever opened up a gift and thought, that's not what I wanted? I, I didn't want pain i like I, I didn't want this I, I didn't want a pandemic like I, COVID by now it should be gone we've been wrestling with this thing for years like it, it, it just needs to get out of the way but but that's what I'm going to get this Christmas like, what D- death God I, I you didn't have to take my mom you, you didn't have to take my dad. I mean, that, like, that's not what I wanted this Christmas. I, I don't want the conflicts or the, the struggling marriage. God, I didn't ask for that. That's not the gift that I wanted or cancer. Couldn't you have just waited? I mean, really? You, you want to you wanna bring cancer into my life right now? Like, like why? why? That's not what I wanted, God. That's not what I asked for. Loneliness? I mean, I felt like by now, I would have someone. By, by now, I, I, would, I would have that significant other that I could celebrate this time of the year. But you didn't give that to me. You gave me something else. I didn't want that. You ever got into Christmas and you got a gift that you didn't want? I wonder today, um, how many of you are tempted to, to just give up on something because what you've gotten, you didn't ask for? Like, I didn't ask for the adultery. That's not my deal. I'm, I'm just going to give up on it. I, I, I didn't ask for the, the financial strain. I just want to give up. I, I, can't, I can't handle it. The, the, the conflict? I've had enough of conflict. 
Where are you tempted to give up this Christmas? Zechariah and Elizabeth, as I look at their story, that seems to me to be where they're at. Years and years and years of silence. All we want is, is children. All we want is a son. We go back to the story, and we find that Zechariah is confronted by this angel Gabriel, and Gabriel says, okay, uh, your prayers have been heard. You're going to have a son. And listen to what begins to happen in verse 16. He's going to tell him about this son that he's giving them. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. This is what is going to happen. This, this, this child is going to come. I know you'd lost hope. I, knew, I know you'd given up on Christmas, but listen to what's getting ready to happen, Zechariah. And Zechariah, he listened to how he responds, says to the angel in verse 18, um, how shall I know this? Like, how can I believe this? For, for I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. Now, I love that. He didn't say, I'm an old man, and my wife is an old woman. <laughs> She's just advanced in years. How is this even possible? I've been praying to you, God, for years and years and years. Like you could have brought a child to us when we were in our 30s. Now we're in our 60s, in our 70s, and, and you're, this is what you're wanting to do? There's no way. How, how's, how's that even possible? You, do you think that Zachariah maybe had given up? You should go back and, and read the rest of the story. I'm, I'm not going to finish out the story today, except I, I'll, I'll give you a little spoiler alert. He does have a son. Um, John the Baptist is born. And uh, it's really, really a cool story and a cool finish. But when I read this story, this, this time I read it and I thought, Zachariah is like many of us. He's, he's given up. He's given up. See, uh, in Jewish culture, they would teach young couples to have large families. They would teach them. Because they never knew when a son might be born who would be the Messiah. Zechariah had given up on that, on having a Messiah. If I go back to that Christmas when I asked for a motorcycle and it wasn't anywhere around. And mom and dad could see that I was getting upset and I wasn't necessarily as happy as I would normally have been. And mom just kept saying, oh, have you looked everywhere? Yeah, I've looked everywhere. <laughs> There's no motorcycle in here. Let me go to the kitchen. Let me look in the kitchen. No, it's not in the kitchen. It's not in the dining room. Mom, where, have you looked everywhere? Not on the sun porch. There was that gift that I wanted, that motorcycle. You know, I think back to this story. Years of silence, decades of suffering and shame and disappointment. Zechariah, he could have really, really given up on God had he just taken the gift that he had received. But I, I wonder if there are some of you here today that I could encourage you and say to just keep looking. Like there's more inside than what there appears to be. There's more to this gift. God's doing a whole lot more than you think. 
when you start to open this thing up, you start to realize that, wow, hold on a minute, there's, there's more to this story. And when we look at the story of Zechariah, we see that there were, some, there were some gifts that we can actually gain from the story. Gifts that he almost missed. Gifts that, that you, you might miss if, if you're not careful. You, you could walk into the season and, and just think it's all over and there's, there's nothing for me. But you can miss some very important gifts. I want to tell you two of them right now. One of the gifts that you could miss is this gift right here. This gift to know that when you don't think God is listening, He is working. Scripture says, the angel said to Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. What have you been praying for? And you're to the point of just giving up. Because you're like, God's not listening. He's not listening. Pastor, I've been praying for my marriage. I have been praying for my marriage. And nothing is changing. I've been praying for my, my, my child, my son. Oh, Pastor, I pray for him every day to come home. But he just keeps getting further and further away. I'm praying. I'm asking God to, to, to heal me, to deliver me, to take this, this addiction that I have, to take it away. But nothing's happening. I wonder, what is it that you've given up on? Can I suggest to you to keep looking, to keep praying, because there's a gift. And that gift is right here that God is still working. He's working. There's so many more gifts that Zechariah experienced. Another gift that I hope that you will know exists today is this one right here. This gift that God's delay does not mean his denial. Think about it. For, for decades, he and Elizabeth had been praying for a son. For decades, God, just give me a child. Just, just any old child, please. I just want a son. I'm committed to you. I love you. God, I, I want my legacy to carry on. No child. Until, until this angel comes. And, and just listen to, to how, what he says about this son. Like many will rejoice at his birth. Like you're not just going to have a boy. But there are going to, people are going to celebrate because of your son. For he will be great because b before the Lord and he will turn many many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God this is a man who is righteous this is a man who is blameless before the Lord he loves God and now this angel is saying to him your son oh he's not just going to be a son oh this, he's going to be so much more than that he's going to turn people's hearts towards me He's going to have this spirit about him because he's going to go before the Messiah. He's going to prepare the way. You see, my delay doesn't necessarily mean a denial. You know, we opened up the service singing this song that you're the God who fights for me. I hope that you'll take that and you will internalize that and place it down into your heart and allow, allow it to build your faith. Because I just feel like that some of you, you've gotten to this time of the year and you just want to give up. And I want to encourage you, don't give up. Just because you don't think God is listening doesn't mean that He is not working. He is working. He is working in your life. He is working in your situation.
And his delay doesn't mean his denial. It just means he's not ready to give you what it is you're asking for. It might be that you're just not ready. You need to get ready. When Zechariah heard this, when he heard this angel, let me tell you, he knows scripture. He, he knows the prophecies. He, he knows what Malachi says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, when the scripture says, Behold, I will send a messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Do you think at that moment, Malachi, uh, uh, Zechariah starts to connect the dots and goes, Hold on a minute. I, I remember centuries ago, this guy writing this prophecy from God. Is that going to be my son? My son? Wow. My boy. The message for us today is simply this. Don't give up on Christmas. Where are you tempted to give up on it? Don't do it. I love what the prophet Isaiah wrote about, about our Heavenly Father. He said in verse chapter 64, verse 4, he says, For since the world began, no ear has heard, and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him church he's working you just keep waiting he hears you he's listening and whatever it is you're praying about don't give up if there's anything the Christmas season tells us it is that he is not just a promise maker but he's a promise keeper. Will you bow your heads? There's no one looking around. Just close your eyes. Wherever, maybe wherever you're watching from right now, would you just, would you just bow your head for just a moment? I want to ask those of you that are Christians, I want to ask you, have you given up on something? Maybe this Christmas that that you, you would define you like I've I've just gotten to the point where I've given up. I've given up on Christmas. I want to encourage you. Stay in there. God is listening and God is working. And maybe there's just some faith that's beginning to grow in you right now trust in Him. Whatever it is that you've given up on, you just trust in Him. There's others of you, you're, you're here or you're, you're watching online and this Christmas, there's a real big risk of you giving up on Christmas. And let me, let me tell you, there's two ways to give up on Christmas. One is just like I just described. Things are not going your way. The things that you're receiving are not the things you asked for. You did not ask for any of that. But there's another way to give up on Christmas, and that way is to believe that Christmas is about something other than Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't surrender to the world's view of what Christmas is. You need to understand what the truth is, and the truth is that there was a son the Son of God who came to this world, to our world, in the form of a baby, Jesus. And he lived among us. And he didn't just live among us, but he lived a sinless, perfect life. He went to the cross for you and for I. He, he bore our sin on him. The Bible says that he became, he became, he made us righteous before God. He became sin on our behalf so that we might be made righteous before God, our Father. That's the gift of Christmas. So can I encourage you and say, don't miss it? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior? If you don't, why don't you receive that gift today? Right now, receive 
that gift. You might say, well, Pastor, I don't, how, how do I do that? I don't want to miss Christmas. I want to receive that gift. This is how you do it. Listen, are you listening? You just call out on his, Him to save you. Just call on Jesus right now. Right where you are, just, just pray this prayer, something like this. Just ask Him. Just say, Jesus, Jesus, will you save me? Jesus, will you forgive me of my sins? Ask Him that. I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you gave your life to pay for my sin. So Jesus, I'm receiving that gift today. Go ahead and tell him that. I'm receiving you, Jesus. Please come into my heart and I'm giving you my life. I don't want to miss Christmas. I don't want to miss it. Listen, if that was your prayer, if that was your conversation right there, Jesus just saved you. He just forgave you of your sins. He really did. It happened that quickly. So I want to ask you to do something. Wherever you are right now, whether you're watching on the other side of a screen or you're right here in person, you got to tell somebody. And if that was your prayer, if you just placed your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, you just said yes to him, would you tell somebody right now? Would you do that by just simply lifting your hand? Wherever you are right now, just, just lift your hand. Go ahead, put them up. Put them up and hold them up right now. Those of you that are online, you can do the same thing. Right in our chat sections, our, our, our hosts are placing links right there. If you're an online church, you can click today. Click the little thing, that the, the hand-raised emoji. Today, I place my faith and trust in Jesus. Just raise your hand right now. Just raise it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Pastor, I just, I just place my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ. I just did that. I just did that. I just did that. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of Christmas. I thank you that we get to celebrate Jesus. I pray for whoever walked in today ready to give up. Maybe there's something that they have been talking to you about for a long time and they thought you're just not listening to them. You're, you're denying them what it is that they're asking for. Help them to know that just because they don't have it yet doesn't mean that you're not listening. Help them to see, God, you're working. You're at work. And your, your delays, they don't mean your denials. Oh, Lord, I pray that as we look at the gifts that we have been given, yeah, there's things in our lives that we didn't ask for, but help us to keep looking because there's some greater gifts in there. God, thank you for the gift of Christmas, the gift that you didn't forget us, but that you came to us. You didn't shout your, your, your love for us from heaven. You showed it here on earth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. This Christmas, this Christmas, we give ourselves to you. We're not giving up. No, we're going to trust in you because you, you're a promise keeper. This is our prayer, and we're believing it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.